Ooh, ah, she's she's always with me, of course. Uh, not only as a doll, um, she's. To be honest, at the moment she's busy. She's building a house. She's she's in the mountains. She's working in the kindergarten. She's taking care of her own kids, living her life with her husband. So it's also like I call her often in quite extreme situations when I can't manage. So she would do a, she does a performance for me or something. So at the moment, you know, we chat on and off, and she's not now, not yet. So we're not working on anything uh, at the moment. But, um, you know, who knows, once um, a show, uh, one or the other kicks in. But I think if, and if I will answer more generally, um, what, what do we have now? Christine! Christine, what do we have? <laughs> no, no, um, I do, Christine is my studio director, just, you know, just to say a few words. Um, Marina is my amazing archivist, um, Nastya and Veronika are amazing studio assistants, and Angelika is the project manager. So that's my team. Super power girls, girl power, spice girls, spicy girls. Um, uh, and we are we're working on a show uh, at the uh, Fries Museum in uh, the Netherlands that is going to be a very big solo show, maybe my biggest to date uh, in uh, Europe. And they're bringing in large-scale works that haven't been shown before in the Netherlands. And for example, in the case of Sharivari, it hasn't been shown before in uh, Europe at all. We work on a project uh, with uh, Franz Masseril Center called Solitude, which I also, which I quite like because I I've, I wanted to also experiment with smaller things. So we're doing um, something which would be an art experienced at home rather than an art experience from home. And I think kind of in today's day, that's uh, what we need. We need something that can arrive to us that we'll be able to touch, see, uh, I don't know, put in your mouth, put in your palm, rub, and I don't know, maybe carry on you every day. And I'm actually thinking of making jewelry. I've been uh, looking at a lot of jewelry lately. I don't know, maybe it's crazy vanity, but there's something about kind of small form and it's something about micro museums uh, that excites me, that um, kind of gives me some sort of sense of, um, on one hand, sense of uh, security, sense of your personal future. And on the other hand, um, it sort of um, makes me think about how you structure your body through jewelry as well. And there's actually a very interesting article that I read uh, recently on uh, jewelry as body-oriented artifacts, exactly about how you structure your body perhaps belonging to many worlds through jewelry. So I'm trying, I'm trying to think this through. And I think it's, I always sort of like just give myself different tasks and give everyone in the studio different tasks of how to, how to jump in scale, um, how to make smallest mountain, unclimbable mountain climbable, how to, how to build, uh, how to build sort of a, how to build a, build a pyramid out of people that would be show uh, a support structure for the art. How to overcome fear of heights. How to question preservation of the artworks. And right now I'm referencing tightrope, obviously, you know, because also even tightrope, it grew out of many questions that I had. It grew out of a question of how, what happens with the preservation uh, of art in in Russia, in different uh, museums, uh, rural or city museums, and also, what are you what are you ready to do as an artist to preserve uh, what you make, and what would it mean to have your artwork in the museum, and what fears you have to walk through and step over when you conceive something and when you create something. I'm, I'm currently, I don't know if it's a project or if it ever, like, if it will become a project, but I'm constantly thinking about how to erase myself, how to erase myself, um, and what is the font size in which sort of my name has to be written. Because kind of looking at the 
incredible amount of people that I work with and incredible expertise that I see. I think of maybe like I, I think of how to make that labor and that expertise more visible. And this is something completely unresolved. And it can be, I don't know, I'm not sure it can be resolved on the exhibition poster. It can't be resolved by three-name exhibition. It even can't be resolved if all the participants of the process are on the poster. So this is the question that is lingering in the air, is how to make labor of people that I work with more visible. And different type of labor, emotional labor, psychological labor, physical labor, expertise um, sort of of their circle of interests, knowledge, and just kind of pure sharing. And I think so it's this, and it of course relates to social flexibilities that I've talked about that are essential for for the growth and even our own, you know, flexibility with uh, Christina and Angelica and Marcel and Edith when we were installing and the whole team actually, uh, that when we were installing online on Zoom from different parts of the world, when kind of when they made, uh, when they made copies of the mountains which could not be moved from Tatley, you know, what what is it? Uh, it was this beautiful work by Francis Alice when. Uh, faith moves mountains when he moved uh, a little dune by a few centimeters with the help of a lot of people. I mean, th there was a different type of movement with the mountains here, but because the mountains from the Tatley couldn't travel to Oldenburg, you know, they erected new mountains and, ver and five different mountains. So in the end, we'll have like the Superhero Sighting Society and now has 10 unclimbed mountains. So much bigger landscape, much bigger landscape that was, that emerged um, in Germany, you know. So we're having a very vast uh, landscape thanks to this show, even though we've never been to this show. But I do hope that this encounter um, happens and people experience art, you know, firsthand. But maybe to go back to that uh, idea of many, many names on a poster and many, many people that made, uh, that make what I do possible uh, and that we make what we do possible, maybe that's even better is um, right now there's a show at Gebert Foundation called Eat the Museum, and they are showing uh, all the works from Tightrope that are on loan from Van Abe and Mucha Museum, who own copies of the works. And I suggested to Fanny and Victor if they, can, um, if they would be interested in putting all the artist's name of, um, on their artist list. So we're talking about uh, 61 works and we're talking about 61 additional names on their list of artists for their show. And they did it. And I'm incredibly happy. So this is one tiny, one tiny way uh, this thing of acknowledging, acknowledgement resolved. And I think I'll be looking for more ways um, in the future.